In this tutorial, I will show you how to model magnetic hysteresis using COMSOL multiphysics. In the model, we will have a ferromagnetic cylinder within a concentric coil, as you can see in this figure. And on the right side, you can see the hysteresis curves. Uh, I will show you how to generate these curves uh, in this tutorial. So the first thing, we'll go to Model Wizard. We will choose 2D axisymmetric. And then Magnetic Fields Interface. And we will need to do the simulation in the time domain. So choose time dependent study. It's taking some time to load here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and construct the geometry. So first we will need the airspace. I will change the units to millimeters. And then we will create the ferromagnetic cylinder. Now the coil. And uh, to test our results, we will insert a point. We will, we will let the point be at the center of the cylinder. And under airspace, you can go to layers and uh, add a five millimeter layer. This is not really necessary, but uh, we, we are going to define an infinite element uh, domain to make the results more accurate. So to do that, you need to go under definitions, right click and click on infinite element domain and then choose the outer layers. Since we are working in a 2D axis symmetric model, we will need uh, to select cylindrical coordinates. Okay, now we can define the materials. So for the air, we can define the materials uh, manually. Permeability is going to be one, conductivity zero, relative permittivity one. Now uh, for the uh, ferromagnetic material, if you have your own data that you want to work with, you can insert them manually. Otherwise, um, you can select uh, materials from the list of materials uh, given in COMSOL. So I will uh, insert a Giles Atherton uh, model. This is not really a realistic material, but uh, it contains built-in values for the Giles Atherton model, which is the model uh, we will use to model hysteresis. You can see a bunch of properties. I will go over them in a moment. Let's select... Uh, uh, you don't need to insert any value for permeability. You will see later that we don't need it. And you don't have to define any material for the coil because the conduct conductivity of the coil will be defined in the physics. So we go to physics, domains, we insert Ampere's law. Select the ferromagnetic cylinder. And then under magnetization model, we will choose hysteresis Giles Atherton model. This is what we will need. You will see that there are five parameters associated with the Giles Atherton model. As I said, you can either uh, use the built in values or you can define your own values if you have them. In this case, we will take the built in values in COMSOL. So you can see here, these are the parameters. Uh, I will not go over all of them, but the important one, saturation magnetization, it's the maximum amount of magnetization that a material can attain. It's a material property. And you can even see here magnetization reversibility. This is really what determines hysteresis because if this has a value of one, then there is no hysteresis. If it is zero, then uh, the hysteresis loop will be very wide. 
this for some reason it is still asking for permeability so we will enter any value but uh, the solver isn't really going to use it and now we need to define the coil select the coil we will select homogenized multi to uh, this this model will basically ignore the skin effect in the coil we will put some 400 turns and for the input current we will actually define a sinusoidal signal we will do that under global definitions right click go to functions and there are multiple ways of doing this you can either insert a waveform but i'm going to choose the piecewise function uh, because I want to define several uh, sinusoidal signals of different amplitudes to generate the hysteresis curves which I showed you in the beginning. So the several curves are generated because of different sinusoidal uh, signals. So the input argument x, we want the input to be time. So under units, we'll see that the argument is seconds and the function, the output unit will be amperes. And so to define the function, we need to um, insert, define the starting time, which is zero seconds, the end time one second. We will choose a, an operating frequency of one hertz. So let's say an amplitude of 10 times sine, two pi and then one hertz times x. But remember here, x stands for time. We will insert this function multiple times, but with different amplitudes. So 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5. So let's see here, we have an amplitude of 8, 6, 4. And for the last one, we'll keep it the same. Now, to make sure that you have uh, defined your function properly, uh, properly, you can click on plot and you will see. So this will be the input signal in our model. It's a sinusoidal signal. You can see here, this is the first one. Here's the second and each one of them have a different amplitude. Uh, just the last two signals will have the same amplitude. The name of the function is pw1. You can define anything here. So for example, we can, we can say i. And then we can call this function uh, in the coil. So here, instead of inserting a value, we can insert i, and it's a function of time. So we will supply time. The letter T here is a reserved parameter. So when you insert T, COMSOL understands that you are trying to insert time. And now we are going to mesh the geometry. We will select a user-defined mesh. Now, since we have an infinite element domain, it is, it is best to use a mapped, uh, uh, mapped mesh for the infinite element domain because it increases efficiency. So I'm going to delete the default nodes. I will insert distribution to um, basically the uh, distribution node allows you to determine the number of layers. So here we have five. So that will be five layers. We will also insert a sizing node to make the mesh in the coil and the ferromagnetic cylinder very small because to get accurate results with histories is you need a very small mesh. So we will select the cylinder and the coil and we will go for extra fine mesh. Actually, Okay, so now the mesh is complete. Now we can, um, before we click on solve, there are only a few steps you need to follow. Uh, since the model will uh, run for five seconds, uh, 
that's what we defined in the uh, for the input from zero to five. So under the time dependent solver, you need to choose the output times that you need to that you want to save. So the first time is zero, the last one is five, and we are going to do it in steps of 0 0.02 seconds. So that will give us uh, give us enough number of points to get its mean curve. Okay. Right click on study and show a default solver. There is one final step you need to do to ensure the accuracy of the results. HomeSol will automatically determine the time steps when solving uh, the model. But uh, under the time dependent solver here, you can click on time stepping. And what I suggest you do is put a maximum constraint on the step size. So under maximum uh, step constraint, keep it a constant and we will go for 0 0.01 seconds. So what this means is if, if the solution requires a very small a step size, then Comsol will do that. But it, basically what we are trying to tell Comsol is don't increase the step size beyond 0 0.01. Do not make it larger than this value. Uh, the smaller the value, of course, the better it is for accuracy, but the longer the simulation will take to, to be complete. So that's done, and times to store, output times by interpolation. Now we can click on compute. The solution will take uh, maybe a minute or two, depending on the speed of your computer. So I will pause the video here and come back when the solution is complete. So welcome back. The solution took one minute and 18 seconds to be complete. Uh, you would see that a convergence plot uh, has been generated. This shows you basically the solution process. You can see here the uh, the flat segments of the convergence plot. It's This is the reciprocal of step size, and it is equal to 100 because we uh, put a constraint that the maximum step size is 0 0.01 seconds. But of course, you see uh, in... Uh, uh, in other places, the step size is even smaller because uh, the solver detects that the solution is uh, changing very quickly. And so it reduces the step size to ensure that the solution remains accurate. So now we can look at the results. If you click on 2D plot and you insert a surface plot, you can see the magnetic field. You can look at magnetization. Uh, but what we are really interested in is the hysteresis curve. So under results, go to 1D plot. Under 1D plot, we will choose a point graph. And then we will choose the point that we created in the middle of the cylinder. So on the y-axis, we want to plot the z component of the magnetic flux density, so mf dot bz. And on the horizontal axis, we want the magnetic field intensity. So under x-axis data, change parameter to expression, and we will enter mf dot hz. Click on plot. So here you can see the hysteresis curves. Now, if you want to generate curves with different colors, as you can see here, uh, you can insert, you can plot each segment independently. So under point graph, uh, data sets, study solution, instead of plotting all the time uh, values, you can choose, you can manually choose the time um, values that you want. So we'll go with from zero in steps of 0 0.01 seconds to one second. Duplicate the plot. And for the second one, you can go from one second to two seconds. So here's the second hysteresis curve. And you can do this for uh, you can do this for all the uh, 
for the remaining curves. You can see here that uh, for the first cycle, the uh, value of b is equal to zero when h is equal to zero. The value increases to a maximum. And then when it comes back, it doesn't go back to zero because there is some remnant uh, magnetization in the material. And this is caused by hysteresis. You can create an animation of the whole process. Um, let me go back to plotting all the time values. Uh, all. So from here, you click on animation, click on player. Okay, that was very fast. Now you can repeat this uh, animation if you want and you can slow it down. Increase the number of frames. So basically this animation will show you what is happening to the uh, magnetize it, to the BH curve as the simulation proceeds. So this is the first cycle. Now we have the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one. Now, since the fifth cycle had the same uh, sinusoidal amplitude, you can see that the curve overlaps. So the fifth curve overlaps on top of uh, the fourth curve. So that is all for hysteresis modeling. Uh, of course, as always, if you have any questions, if anything is unclear, feel free to leave a comment and I will answer them whenever I see the comment and whenever I have time. Thank you so much for seeing this tutorial. See you next time.